Hey, what's going on everybody? Uh, you might be surprised to see me in a kitchen and not in the garage and that's because I am not going to be doing uh, DIY automotive videos anymore. I'm going to be doing cooking videos for you guys. So, um, hope you guys are excited for that. Uh, it's going to be an awesome journey and I'm going to show you guys a lot of cool recipes, cooking techniques and everything. So, um, today's cooking recipe is going to be split pea soup and First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get uh, some split peas and we're gonna get a bowl. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna wash these peas because sometimes they're dirty and we just wanna make sure that they're clean so when we're eating them we don't bite into like a rock or anything and it just helps with the flavor. So I'm gonna go ahead and spin up the bag just like that. So. Pour it all in. As you can see that I'm new to this, so that's why it's spilled, a little nervous. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill up the bowl with water and then we're just gonna rinse these peas out uh, and then we're gonna run it through a strainer and then we're gonna do that a few times and then after that, we're gonna let the peas sit in uh, filtered water. I like to use filtered water. If you like to use tap water, that's okay. I'm gonna use filtered water. We're gonna let these peas sit in for about like two hours. Uh, some people argue um, that you gotta let your beans or peas or whatever sit for like four hours or eight hours, but uh, I've learned that like two hours is fine. So we're gonna go put some water in this bowl, um, start straining, cleaning the peas and everything, and then um, get this going so that we can enjoy some awesome split pea soup. All right. Okay, so I washed my peas and I just uh, filled the bowl with filtered water. So now we're gonna let them soak. And so what you wanna do with the filtered water is you want to bring the water level up, I'd say about an inch above uh, the peas because they're gonna soak up a lot of the water and you wanna make sure that there's plenty of water uh, for them to soak up. So uh, about an inch above the peas are, are good. Now we're just gonna let this sit for a couple hours and then after that, um, we're gonna get started on preparing them and cooking them. So let's count down. All right, two hours. All right, everybody, we're back. Our beans have been sitting for two hours and so now we're gonna get a pot. We're gonna pour the beans into the pot and then we're gonna start cooking them. So let's grab a pot. We have a pot right here. And then since I used filtered water or the water that you have in the bowl already, you can just transfer it over to the pot. No big deal. Make sure you get all those beans out there. So the thing um, that you're going to do is you're going to repeat the same process, sort of. You're going to make sure that there's at least an inch of water above the peas. Um, I might have said beans earlier, but peas, we're talking about peas, split peas. And so we want to just make sure that there's water above the peas in the pot so that they cook because the water is going to cook down and um, we don't want to Kind of burn our peas so make sure there's enough water above the peas same as with the bowl and then uh, we're going to put this on the, on the stove set the fire to medium and then let it cook for about an hour so let's get started okay so we have our peas cooking and you want to notice how the peas look and as you can tell that um, the peas have soaked up a lot of the water so that's why I say check on them uh, every 15 minutes to just you know make sure that they're not cooking and you want to just add water uh, as necessary so um, also notice how the peas look um, if they're starting to kind of break apart uh, very easily then that means they're uh, getting close to done and from there um, we'll go ahead and throw them into the blender. So just check the peas, see, see if they're starting to get a little mushy, which is good. Uh, we don't want them firm. Uh, we want them to, to start breaking up. So just kind of stir them around 
uh, check on them and once they get really mushy then we'll turn the fire off let them sit for a bit just to cool down and then we'll throw them into the blender along with our seasonings okay so we're back uh, we have our peas cooking and i'm going to talk to you guys about seasonings and uh, the thing with seasoning is this is what I put in my split pea soup and I'm not going to tell you about teaspoon this or tablespoon that because everybody have different taste buds. So this is just a rough guideline and from there you can fine tune it to the way you want. You know, you just kind of sample as you go. And so yeah, no strict rules. We're breaking the rules today. Just uh, what I put in the split pea soup and then from there you can even add to it. So. If you feel I'm lacking in a specific seasoning, uh, go ahead and add your seasoning to it as well. Um, but this is just a general guideline that I've used. So um, we have uh, minced garlic, garlic salt, fine pepper, chopped onion, curry powder, cumin powder, turmeric powder. That's what I like to use. Um, and then if you want, you can add more salt or if you feel the garlic salt isn't enough, uh, you can use like some sea salt or table salt. Uh, to however you want and uh, that's pretty much it so um, with all that said I'm gonna show you guys how I uh, mix it into the soup I don't just pour it into the soup while it's cooking uh, because sometimes especially with cumin powder uh, turmeric curry powder they'll clump together and then you know you'll you'll just have like a big clump of uh, seasoning while you're eating sometimes and then that can just be a big flavor mess so uh, I'll show you guys how I do it and then um, yeah, we can like really just start enjoying our soup. So uh, with that said, uh, let's go check on our peas and then we'll start mixing in all the seasoning. Cool, all right, let's get started. All right, so we have our blender and our peas have been cooking. They're nice and soft. Uh, we have our seasoning off to the side and now we're just gonna pour our peas into the blender and then we're just gonna throw our seasoning into the blender and then from there, just gonna mix everything up and then throw that back into the pot and then let it cook. So that's the kind of secret to uh, mixing the seasoning so that it doesn't clump together, is to mix it in the blender, then blend it, then put it back on the stove and let it cook some more. So, all right, let's go get our peas and pour it into the blender, start blending. are all in the blender here. It's not necessary to get all the peas, just uh, most of them. Okay, we go put this back on the stove here. All right, so now we have our peas in the blender and um, just kind of a note, uh, make sure that the peas have cooled down so that it just doesn't um, warp the plastic of the blender. Uh, it's highly unlikely, but you just don't want to take the risk. So just let them cool down a bit. Uh, also, so you don't burn yourself. Uh, okay, so now we're going to put our seasoning in. So like I said, um, just, you know, how, how much, however much seasoning you feel is comfortable, uh, that's how much you're going to put. So uh, don't really go off of my guidelines because you can also, you know, tweak it later as you, as you feel, as you feel the need to. So, you know, you're just kind of going, going off feel. If you feel later that um, you need more, just go ahead and add a little bit more. Uh, I love cumin powder, so I will add like a ton of, I don't think, I don't think I could not add enough. Sometimes I'll even just take the cap off and just um, pour it in. And a, a cool trick uh, when you are um, pouring in seasoning like without a cap and you don't want to pour in too much is to just tilt it and tap it with your finger like that and it'll just be enough, you know, like and then you can kind of control it a lot better than if you just pour it in. So uh, that's a little trick, just kind of tap it with your finger there. And curry powder, love this stuff. All right, throw in some chopped dried onions here. 
And then I think like on the container it says for like one teaspoon or something, it's equivalent to half an onion. So be careful. Um, another thing to be careful about, uh, especially for me, is fine ground pepper. And I use ground pepper on a lot of things like my salads and stuff like that. Um, but when you cook with ground pepper, in soups, you have to be really careful because the amount that you put on, like that you put on some food that's cold, like the pepper's cold and uncooked, uh, is a lot different than when you cook the pepper and a lot of more uh, spice comes out uh, when you cook it. So be very careful. You only want to put a little bit and then if you feel you can handle more spice, go ahead and add later. But it's always best to add just a little and err on the side of caution than add too much because once you add too much, you can't bring that back. Um, maybe you can, uh, I just don't know how, unless you add water, but then you're gonna water it down and it just, be it just becomes a big like mess. So uh, it's better to just err on the side of caution and just use a little bit and then add more later uh, if you need to. So now we got our garlic salts and I'm just gonna go ahead and use the big lid here, the big mouth. And I'm not gonna add too much salt just because I don't like salt. Um, and then salt is also a preference for a lot of people. So if you have guests and you're cooking for guests, uh, it's better to just give them the salt on the side and say like, hey, look, if you need more salt or if you want more salt, uh, here's the salt, uh, add it to your soup. And it won't make a difference in flavor uh, in terms of like them adding more, they'll, they'll love it anyway because they like salt. Um, so next is minced garlic. Like I said, I love garlic. So I'm gonna go ahead and just um, pour in garlic. Yeah, I'm not using a spoon because I just love garlic a lot. And spoons are for people that don't like garlic. Yeah, there I said it. Okay, so we have everything. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that lid on here. Seal it up. Everything looks good. Now we're just gonna go ahead, hit that blender. Sometime today. Let's turn on the power. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now we got everything inside, hit that blender. Stop it. Get our spatula over here. Open it back up. And then any little seasoning that just kind of got stuck at the top, we'll just go ahead and push that down. Put this back on. All right, now we're just gonna turn on our blender again and start mixing it up. All right, we'll go ahead and take a look and see how it's doing. And yes, it looks nice and creamy, and that's what we want. We want a nice creamy blend. Um, we don't want it to look too chunky. So yeah, everything looks good. Now we can just take this, take off this lid of course here, and pour it back into our pot. So we'll just take this on over to our pot, pour it back in. Nice and creamy. All right, so um, our beans are cooking. They're nice and creamy now. Now we're just kind of letting those uh, flavors and seasonings just kind of really uh, unlock and get into the soup. And so uh, you might find that your peas are a little dry. Uh, it's, it's, so if you want to make it uh, more creamier, uh, then go ahead and just add some more water. And another thing, if you're wondering, uh, well, hey, where's the butter? Um, where's the milk? Or where's all like that good fat and all that kind of stuff? Um, I don't use those things, so uh, I'm vegan. And well, I guess, yeah, vegan for the most part. Uh, some people might say that not using honey is not vegan. I like honey, so um, I just don't use animal products. And so I just use water instead of 
milk maybe or butter and all that kind of stuff so once again if you like to use that um, you can add to it uh, you can definitely add butter uh, later um, so for, for me I'm gonna add water uh, to the soup even though it's creamy I want to just make it a little bit more soupy so I'm just gonna go add some water and I'm not gonna add like any kind of measured amount um, like a cup or half a cup I'm just gonna pour in uh, a little bit at a time until I like the consistency uh, you know just the way I want it so uh, just gonna pour it in a little bit at a time okay so um, the water is in uh, I got my soup just the way I want it and now it's cooking and we're gonna prepare the table and we're gonna sit down and eat and we're gonna just have a nice good conversation so uh, let's get everything prepared and I'll meet you at the dinner table all right All right, we have our nice uh, soup here. Just nice and creamy deliciousness. And um, so, yeah, um, gonna just see what's going on. What's going on with you? Uh, how's everything? Uh, yeah, so how's, how's the soup? Is it good? Yeah, good? Yeah, let's, let's, let's taste that. Mmm, so good, so good. And just to think, um, you know, you don't have to make a super fattening uh, recipe uh, for something to be good. So that's really awesome. Um, the other thing is, yeah, let's, uh, let's dive right into conversation here. Uh, one thing that's, you know, just kind of, it's been on my mind and I, I, I seem like I've noticed it more these days and that is uh, people not using their blinkers and is it, I, I, like, I'll talk to my friends about it, you know, and the common thing you hear, oh, they're jerks, blah, 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 no one uses their blinker. But is that really the case? Um, maybe they just bought their car, they're really excited, and they don't know all the features, you know? Maybe they have, like, something fancy, and it's super high-tech, and they're just like, where the heck is the blinker? Sorry, everybody, switching lanes, good luck, you know? So, um, yeah, it's, it's, there's just so many other things that could be involved other than you know, just assuming that just someone is, is a jerk because they don't use their blinker. Or what if they're just not good at multitasking? And so they're like, you know, in a, you know they're kind of like trying to switch lanes. There's a lot of traffic and it's like, oh crap, oh crap, I just need to switch lanes. Oh, I forgot my blinker, you know, and, and they're feeling really bad about it. And to you, you're like, oh man, that jerk. But really, um, to them, it was just, you know, like they, they just struggled to try to do a bunch of things at once. And yeah, I know the argument is, well, they shouldn't be driving, but you know, um, at least they didn't cause an accident uh, with you, <laughs> you know. Um, the other thing I guess you could argue about not using the blinker is, uh, what if it's the slow lane change? You know what I'm talking about? It's the lane change where like, they slowly creep into your lane without using a blinker. That one, I don't know, that one's pretty interesting. So let's just um, say for the sake of argument, let's just say that maybe they're distracted, like maybe they're changing the radio as they're changing lanes and they forget to use their blinker. And so uh, yeah, that, that'll, that'll let them off the hook. Hmm, so good. Wow, I could, I could eat this all day. So yeah, lane changing, blinkers. What do you think? Um, also, what if cars like manufacturers made an auto blinker? Because, you know, like the way things are going now, you know, you have lane assist, you have cars that can almost drive themselves. So what if, there's a feature on the car where, you know, you can like, um, it, it'll automatically turn on the signal when you're changing lanes. So like, you don't even have to use a signal blinker anymore. You can just change lanes and the car will know you're changing lanes and automatically turn on a blinker. And then you might say, well, what if I'm in the country or like on like some back road or it's like four in the morning and there's no cars and I don't want my blinker on. Well then, 
that's the case, the engineers would know about that because they'd be smart enough to think about that. And then they would have it so that the computer would notice other cars. And if there's no other cars around, then it won't use the blinker. Um, and then if there's cars within like, let's say 50 feet or 100 feet, then it will use the blinker. So um, yeah, what do you guys think about that? Uh, let me know in the comments and, and I'd love to hear your opinions and you know, see, see what you guys think about automated uh, blinkers. Um, what do you think about people using their, not using their blinkers now that you know, we've kind of broadened the scope here a bit? Um, because yeah, I mean, I, I, I really hate to say that, you know, all people are jerks because they don't use their signal um, or their blinker. It could be a, n thousands of reasons why. And so I just want to explore those reasons and uh, see how you feel about it. Um, do you feel like using a blinker is good or do you feel like um, it's not necessary and it's just kind of pointless and the person behind you shouldn't be tailgating you or they should be aware of your car there and knowing that you're coming in based off of the body language of your car. You know what I mean by body language? Like some people, um, you can tell that they're gonna come into your lane or that they're gonna turn based off of just how the car is moving. Um, so, you know, if you can read the body language of cars, then, you know, maybe you don't really mind if someone doesn't use their blinker, but not everybody can do that. So, you know, what do, what do you think? Just, um, just love to hear your opinions on that. Mm. So good. Yeah, this is really good. Um, if you're wondering also why I don't have like wine or anything, I don't drink wine or alcohol or any kind of spirits. And um, yeah, I just really want to just eat the soup. You know, I just feel like just soup today. Um, but also, I want to hear your opinions. This is my first cooking video from start to finish. And do you want to see more cooking videos? Do you want to see more recipes? Um, or do you just want to sit here and just talk? And, you know, like um, you can bring your own food to the table and we can just eat together and just talk about things. So let me know. Let me know uh, what you guys want. But this is definitely, yeah, like a, a first. And so it's, it's a little... It's a little, I guess, um, not as smooth as I would like it to be. Well, I feel. But um, yeah, definitely let me know in the comments if you guys would like to see more recipes of me cooking or just me eating and talking to you and just having a good conversation. So uh, let me know. And um, yeah, yeah. So once again, this is so good. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And you know, it's like just the right amount of everything. Like I, I, I nailed it, in, in my opinion. For you, you might be like, oh man, um, it needs more of this or more of that, which is totally fine. Um, I hope that you've added that before you sat down and started talking or listening. So yeah, yeah, I hope that uh, the soup is great for you. And um, yeah, it's just, hmm. So good. But yeah, um, so going back to the blinker thing, um, I guess that's pretty much, you know, like all I can really think about in terms of, you know, blinkers. Um, it's just one of those things like, it's, is it necessary or not? Or is it a big deal if someone doesn't use it? And for me, you guys are wondering, do I use a blinker or not? And I use a blinker. Um, the cool thing is my car has the flick so like you flick it and then it does the three blinks automatically, um, which is really cool because I don't like to just leave my blinker on because sometimes uh, I'll forget that it's on and then I'm driving like miles and then it's just like, oh shoot, I have this blinker blinking. People have probably been trying to let me in for like miles. And uh, so yeah, um, I, just, I just flick it and it does the three blinks. And it's funny because I'll look at modern day cars where I know that they have it and I'll see uh, a car use their blinker and they'll use the blinker and then they'll physically turn it off. And you can tell that they physically turned it off because the blinker will turn off midway through the blink, like through the light being on. And I think to myself, like, do you know that you can just flick the, the handle? 
and uh, you'll get the three blanks and uh, it's really convenient. So um, if you are that person, yeah, go give it a try. Or if you don't know if your car has it, just give it a try anyway. You might be surprised and you might find something new about your car and just you know bring a new spark to your relationship with your car. So um, yeah, give that a shot. But yeah, I, I use my blinker. I, I'm one of those people that I, I use it like all the time for everything. And, um, and to answer your question, if I judge people that don't use their blinker, uh, no, not as much because I think about those things. Well, what if they're doing this? What if they're doing that? Um, what if they just don't know how to use their blinker and things like that? So that's the thing. I always try to uh, broaden my vision of, you know, what what is going on in, in the whole grand scheme of things uh, is, you know, I try not to be one sided, but sometimes I am one sided in things and I have to really force myself to to step back and see the other side. So yeah, but for the blinkers, I try to, you know, think about more than just uh, the driver, you know, purposely not using their blinker, uh, thinking that the world belongs to them, the road has their name on it. There's probably more factors to it than that. So yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, that's that's me. <laughs> mm. So good. The other thing is, um, what do you think about just total automation of cars? Do you think that um, cars, you know, like how do you feel about cars driving themselves 100% and you just sit back, maybe do some office work or eat a sandwich, go to sleep? What do you think about that? Um, love to hear your opinions. Uh, we'll definitely get into that uh, on the next video. Um, so yeah, yeah, let, let me know. And uh, I'm full, I'm super stuffed. Um, you're probably wondering like, well, don't you have more soup in there? And I do, but I've also been sampling and tasting the soup as I've gone along, so I'm, I'm pretty full. And uh, yeah, I hope that um, this conversation has been good for you guys, and I'd love to talk to you guys some more. So if there's any other thing you wanna say in the comments, please um, go ahead and comment. If you like this video, um, let me know so that I can continue making more videos like this or let me know if you just want me to just sit down and eat with you. And um, yeah, so uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button and comment please. And I'll talk to you guys next time. See ya.